It is the true believer's ability to shut his eyes and stop his ears to facts that do not deserve to be either seen or heard, which is the source of his unequaled fortitude and constancy. He cannot be frightened by danger, nor disheartened by obstacle, nor baffled by contradictions, because he denies their existence. Eric Hoffer, The True Believer. Welcome back. We're in the last chapter of Cervantes' masterpiece. In chapter 74, death arrives. The opening words of this last chapter echo those found at the beginning of the era's wills. Since human affairs are not eternal, especially the lives of men, proceeding always to decline from their beginnings until they reach their ultimate ends, and since that of Don Quixote had no divine privilege to detain its natural course, it reached its end and expiration when he least expected it. Three aspects of the denouement interest us. First, Don Quixote fully recovers from his insanity. Second, he settles his accounts and leaves his estate in perfect order. And third, Cidiamete has the last word, summarizing the significance of both Don Quixote the character and Don Quixote the novel. How do we know Don Quixote recovers his sanity? He exhibits signs. For example, he sleeps deeply. The narrator notes his calm spirit when his doctor tells him death is approaching. Finally, he himself notes his own sanity. Blessed be almighty God who has done so much good for me. And so his mercies have no limit, nor do the sins of men curtail or hinder them. Again, I now have my judgment free and clear of the ignorant and gloomy shadows imposed on it by my continual and lamentable reading of the detestable books of chivalry. And again, wish me well, good sirs, for I am no longer Don Quixote of La Mancha, but Alonso Quijano, once called the good due to my virtuous life. Now I am the enemy of Amadis of Gaul and all that infinite horde of his lineage. Now all the profane histories of knight errantry are odious to me. This denunciation of the chivalric novels echoes the opinion regarding these texts found in the writings of humanists like Erasmus, Vives, and more. There are other indications of a humanist finale here. As he did in the printing shop in Barcelona, Don Quixote echoes Felipe de Meneses' Light of the Christian Soul, saying that instead of reading novels of chivalry, he should have spent more of his life reading other books that can bring light to the soul. A curious detail is the allusion Carrasco makes to two dogs that he has bought for the purposes of their pastoral life. This echoes the dogs in the prologue of part two, but it might also be an intertextual reference to Cervantes' other picaresque, The Colloquy of the Dogs, which is also heavily humanist in its outlook. Did you know? The narrator who has the last word, which sums up the significance of Don Quixote, both the character and the novel itself, is Cide Amete Benengeli. Just as important as this ideological shift is the return of domestic tranquility. Alonso Quijano the Good recites his last will and testament in great detail. His first priority is to settle his debt with Sancho, he does so in full. Item, it is my will that with regard to certain monies held by Sancho Panza, whom I made my squire in my madness, and because there have been between him and me certain accounts and payables and receivables, and I do not want him to be held responsible for them, nor that any accounting be required of him, if there are any left after he has paid himself what I owe him, the rest should be his. Then Don Quixote leaves his estate to his niece and pays his housekeeper. Item, I leave the entirety of my estate to Antonia Quijana, my niece, and I wish that the first adjustment to be made should be toward the payment of the salary that I owe my housekeeper for the time that she has served me, plus 20 ducados so she can get herself a nice dress. This final healing emphasis on the domestic economy makes sense 
given that one of the symptoms of Don Quixote's madness was his failure to manage his estate. Three final points about Don Quixote's death. First, hilariously, Don Quixote enters into his will that he pardons Avellaneda for having written a false continuation of his exploits. Second, Cervantes gives us a harsh note of human realism by portraying Don Quixote's heirs as not absolutely depressed. The house was in an uproar, but even with all that, the niece ate, the housekeeper drank, and Sancho Panza was happy, for the idea of inheriting something erases or tempers in the air the memory of the grief which the deceased understandably causes. And finally, in a novel known for its realism, there's a marvelous vacillation here between the metaphysical and the materialistic views of death. He gave up his spirit. I mean to say that he died. Quixotic Mission To whom did Don Quixote inherit his property upon his death? A. His wife B. His housekeeper C. His niece Correct answer, C, his niece. The most touching aspect of the novel's conclusion is Thidiamete's intervention. A long final paragraph consists entirely of his voice. It's also extremely complicated. It starts off as an apostrophe directed to his pen. Thidiamete said to his pen, here you will remain hanging from this rack by this copper wire, my quill pen, I know not whether well or improperly cut. This cosmic pen echoes a Moorish tradition. Then Amete allows the pen itself to speak. It signals the end of the Reconquista by reworking a few lines from a ballad about the siege of Granada. It claims that it and Don Quixote were made for each other. For me alone was Don Quixote born and I for him. He knew how to act and I how to write. Alone the two of us are one. And it takes a final parting shot at Avellaneda. Finally, Amete reiterates that it has been his sole intention to counter the novels of chivalry. My desire has been none other than to make abhorrent to men the false and preposterous histories of the books of chivalry. Note the Christian moral told by Amete to his pen. And with this, you have completed your Christian obligation to counsel well those who wish you evil. In this, Cide Amete appears to be more Morisco than Arab. Thank you for joining me in our reading of the masterpiece of Spanish literature, Don Quixote de la Mancha. I hope you have come to appreciate the values as well as the artistry found in Cervantes' great novelistic achievement. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.